Mark chapter number 12, we'll give you a moment to turn uh, in your Bibles. And we have just a few scriptures to read this morning, maybe about six verses. We're beginning in that 28th verse, Mark chapter number 12 and verse number 28. And uh, you pray for us today that the Lord would help us to preach and that God would be pleased with everything that's said and done here this morning. And uh, I trust by now that you are uh, found your place in Mark chapter 12 or somewhat close to that. And if you are, would you say amen? amen. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for the good day. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings and the abundance of mercy and grace. Now, I pray, Father, you'd help us now to preach in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit, and we'll give praise in Jesus' name. And the Bible says, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, uh, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength, this is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God and there is none other but he. And to love him with all thy heart, and with all thy understanding, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Notice verse 34. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any question. Now, you may be seated and today, with the Lord's help, I, I, I don't plan to be uh, preaching long, but I want to share with you what uh, God has given with me. And I want to take uh, uh, my thought uh, this morning primarily uh, uh, from that 34th verse. Uh, and the Lord here speaking uh, uh, to this scribe who he said uh, answered uh, discreetly or he spoke wisely. Uh, uh, the Lord said, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And I want to preach this morning on that thought, thou are not far from the kingdom of God. I, I realize that uh, having just finished our mission Sunday here at Liberty Baptist Church, uh, and the emphasis uh, uh, was on missions uh, primarily around the world, uh, uh, at uh, uh, outlying regions and faraway places and remote countries. Uh, and my friend, no doubt, uh, uh, there are millions of people, uh, 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 perhaps, Perhaps millions of people, uh, uh, Brother Jeff, uh, uh, that are in remote villages, uh, uh, that are on an isolated island somewhere, uh, that are in the deep depths of some jungle, or, or perhaps uh, uh, in a, a, a city of multitudes of millions of people, uh, uh, third world nations, uh, and uh, places around the world in far distant lands, uh, and outlying regions and remote jungles, uh, and we at Liberty Baptist and I and you, uh, uh, we pray for such people. Uh, uh, we see to the support of the gospel uh, uh, for the preaching of the word of God to these people. Uh, uh, we, uh, we warn them as it were uh, and we preach the gospel to them. Uh, uh, we're concerned uh, about the souls of men uh, around the world. Uh, uh, but this morning, uh, just for a brief moment, uh, I want to preach uh, to a different crowd. Crowd, uh, a smaller crowd, uh, a more specific crowd. Uh, and although I'm interested in people uh, around the world and outlying regions and remote jungles, uh, I, I want to speak to another crowd of people today. Uh, 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 my friend, I want to speak to that crowd of people uh, uh, that are much closer. I, I mean, the, the Bible says that thou art not far uh, from the kingdom of God. Uh, I, I mean, I want to preach that smaller group of people uh, that are on the verge uh, of being saved. Uh, uh, that There may be some here today. Uh, there may be a person here today that, uh, I mean, is close 
I mean, so close to receiving Christ as Savior. And I'm reminded today that people like that, they're almost saved. Almost saved, but altogether lost. Oh, listen, my friend, I wonder about that. How is it that people can uh, stand in the presence of the Lord? Uh, and how is it that people can be uh, standing at the door of heaven uh, and at the gates of eternity? Uh, I mean, uh, the uh, invitation has been given uh, of the porter, uh, of the attendant, uh, of the custodian, uh, the gatekeeper stands uh, at the gate of the kingdom of God uh, and the invitation is given uh, and all that one must do uh, is receive Christ and enter in and walk into eternal life. And yet people today that are almost saved but altogether lost for some reason or not do not enter in. And I wondered about that. What keeps somebody from entering in to the presence of God? Hey, listen, the Bible is very clear. Uh, the Lord is very clear about this, my friend. Uh, there is but one way. Uh, there is but one door. Uh, I mean, there's only one way uh, into the kingdom of God. Uh, there's only one way into eternal life. Uh, uh, there's only one way into salvation. Uh, and that way uh, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, the Lord speaking said, I am the way, uh, uh, the truth, and the life. Uh, he said, no man cometh unto the Father uh, uh, but by me. Uh, and I'm glad, my friend, uh, uh, that I came Jesus' way, uh, uh, that I received Christ as Savior, uh, that I got born again. Uh, and I went from being almost saved, uh, but altogether lost, uh, uh, to being saved uh, uh, to the utmost. Glory, hallelujah. Christ here, Speaking to this scribe, and I thought about this as I was reading this text of scripture, and I, I noticed that little phrase in verse 34, uh, uh, the Lord speaking, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. I, I mean, he was close. Uh, he was standing in the presence of the Savior himself. Uh, uh, he knew the law. Uh, he knew the word of God. Uh, he answered him discreetly and wisely. Uh, but the Lord did not pronounce him saved. Uh, the Lord did not say because of your knowledge, uh, uh, because you have awareness, uh, or because you've been awakened to the word of God. Uh, uh, thou art saved. Uh, my friend, uh, hey, listen, there's a lot of people today uh, uh, that are awakened to their sin. Uh, uh, they know that they're lost. Uh, they realize the debt that they owe, uh, but they are not saved. People, there may be people here today that has a mortgage, for instance, on a home. Uh, you owe money for your home. You, you pay every month. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, you pay every month for the debt, the mortgage that you have on your home and, and my friend you get the mortgage statement uh, once a month or once a quarter however frequently that you get it uh, and you look at it and it says uh, uh, X dollars uh, uh, no doubt probably thousands of dollars it might be 20,000 uh, it might be 200,000 uh, you can get out that uh, uh, that letter from the bank uh, uh, you can read it uh, you can lay it aside you can pick it up uh, a week later and read it uh, uh, you can lay it aside you can pick it up and read it uh, a month from now, you can be fully aware of the debt you owe. But my friend, no matter how much you meditate upon it, no matter how much you wish it was gone, no matter how much you think that because you're aware of the debt that has been erased, my friend, you've got to receive Christ by faith. Glory, hallelujah. I thought about this. I've been dwelling on this this week. And, uh, you know, I believe this all my heart. Those who are most burdened, those that carry the load of sin the heaviest, and those that grieve over the condition are more likely to enter in than anybody else. Oh, my friend, you say, what are you saying? I, I'm saying if you ever get sick of your sin, I, uh, you'll seek the Savior. I, if you ever get tired of carrying the load, I, uh, you'll seek the Savior. I, and my friend, I just wonder today, I, there might be somebody here in our midst I, that is not far 
from the kingdom of God. I mean, they're close. They know the scriptures. They know the word of God. They sit in the presence of godly people. They hear the word of God preach. They come to the house of God. They, they perhaps give to the church. They understand the things of the Bible, but they have not received Christ and they have not trusted in him and believed in him and they're still lost. I think it's sad to think that perhaps there'll be people that die lost and go to hell who sat on a Baptist pew. There may be people today that have church membership in a Baptist church somewhere that have never been saved. Uh, I mean, for what a reason, have never truly been saved. Uh, uh, will die lost. Uh, Why well, we had an instance of that here in the church here not too long ago. Uh, a man uh, uh, had trouble with sin in his life. Uh, I mean, he was, uh, uh, he was dealing with things that he could not overcome and he tried to deal with things on his own. Uh, but God took over and God took charge. And my friend, God revealed to him uh, that he was still lost and in his sin. Uh, he got gloriously saved by the grace of God. And he's facing things today that he'd rather not face. And somebody said, mm, Glory, do you think God is judging him? Oh, no. I said, God is displaying grace. Uh, uh, my friend, because uh, uh, if the things had not happened uh, that happened to this person, uh, uh, they'd still be living in the condition they were in. Uh, but God took over and God took control. Uh, and it was God's grace. Uh, and this person may have to face some things uh, here in this church. Uh, but my friend, now he's saved by the grace of God. Uh, and he's ready to receive what comes his way. It's not God's judgment, it's God's grace. And God, hey, listen, uh, those who are most burdened are most likely to come in. I, I thought about what is it that keeps others from entering in? I, I mean, the king's highway is right before them. Uh, uh, all they have to do is take uh, and enter on the pilgrim's road at once uh, and, uh, and, uh, 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 and receive Christ uh, and be saved. Uh, there are a lot of reasons that people give. May I say today, my friend, uh, whatever reason you have for not entering into the kingdom of God, uh, whatever holds you back from receiving Receiving Christ as your Savior uh, is a foolish reason. Uh, there's nothing in this world uh, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's worth dying lost and going to hell for. And I want to say today, no matter how close you are to the kingdom of God, you may be here today to have a godly wife who loves the Lord and uh, you may hear her pray and uh, you may sit in the council of your, of your in-laws or uh, you may sit uh, under mother and daddy's prayers. You may be here today uh, and so close to the kingdom of God. Uh, but my dear friend, if you do not receive Christ, uh, if you do not trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, you will perish uh, and die lost uh, and unprepared to meet God uh, and die and go to hell. The Lord here speaking to this scribe says, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. He or she who does not take the step of faith and enter upon the road to heaven will perish. How sad. How sad to stand at the door and the gate of heaven. To be able, as it were, uh, metaphorically to, to look, to peer into the things of God, to, to stand on the very threshold of the kingdom of God and die lost and go to hell. The Lord told this scribe, he said, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. How sad, almost saved, but altogether lost. As I mentioned this morning, I want to preach on this thought, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. In our text, we see in verse 8, the Bible says, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reason together, and perceiving that he'd answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? In other words, uh, uh, this scribe, Brother Jeff, uh, I, I mean, he came to Jesus. Uh, uh, he had heard the questions that the other scribes uh, and fair, uh, fair, uh, the Sadducees in this case uh, had put before the Lord. Uh, and he perceived that the Lord answered the questions well. No doubt this scribe 
was a Pharisee because the Sadducees uh, did not believe in the resurrection and, and the Lord had just previously spoken about that uh, uh, in the preceding verses and chapter and may I say that uh, this legal bunch, uh, uh, this self-righteous bunch, uh, uh, this religious bunch uh, had already made up their mind. They would not be content uh, uh, till the Lord uh, till they had killed the Lord uh, uh, they took him for envy and jealousy uh, and they hung him on a cross my dear friend uh, but this scribe there was something different about him and he came to the Lord and in that same verse, in verse 28, he presents a question to the Lord. He said, which is the first commandment of all? Now this scribe was an expert in the law. He knew the Old Testament backwards and forwards as the old saying goes. Uh, uh, he understood uh, uh, the word of God. Uh, that was his life's work uh, and his life's ambition uh, uh, to know and to study the word of God. In fact, they had, they had parted and divided uh, the Word of God so much uh, uh, that the scribes had, uh, had come uh, uh, to dividing up God's, uh, uh, to the law of God, where they had come up uh, with 600, I believe, in 13 laws. Uh, I mean, they had parted it right down uh, uh, to the letter. Uh, I mean, they knew the Word of God. Uh, and if these days, now, I understand they did not have the New Testament, it had not yet been written, uh, and he was a, uh, uh, he was a scholar and, a, uh, and an expert, if you will, in the Old Testament law. Uh, but let me just say it in our terms today. Uh, if you wanted to know something about the Bible, uh, if you want to know something about God's Word, uh, if you wanted to hear what God's Word had to say, uh, you went to a scribe. He knew God's Word. And this scribe comes to Jesus. He's, he's listened to the Lord speak to the Sadducees and and the other scribes, uh, uh, they've tried to put questions before him about the resurrection and and uh, 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 Caesar and things like that. And their whole uh, and their whole uh, notion behind those questions was to trip the Lord up, uh, uh, to get him to commit what they considered blasphemy that they might have charge against him, uh, uh, to bring accusation of death against him. Uh, but this scribe came to the Lord, and and there seems to be something different about him. Uh, and in verse twenty eight, uh, after. After perceiving uh, that the Lord had answered the other's questions well, uh, he says in verse 28, which is the first commandment of all? Now, mind you, there were over 600 commandments. This, uh, this scholar knew the word of God. And, what the, and the big question that he was really asking the Lord here, and the way he phrased it, is what is the greatest commandment of all? You know, they had divided up the law into 600 laws and they had, they had higher laws and lower laws and some were more significant than others. Uh, and this scribe comes to Jesus uh, and, and he calls him master uh, and he says, in other words, what's the greatest of the commandments? And the Lord answers him in verses 29 and verse 31. Uh, uh, the Bible says, and Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is here. O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Hey, then he says in verse 31, and the second is like namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Oh, do you know what the Lord is telling this scribe? Oh, he's, going to, he's giving him a lesson in love. Uh, uh, my friend, he's revealing uh, uh, the need in his life. He said, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, we see in verses 29 and 30 uh, uh, that love for God is a priority. Uh, I mean, that's the greatest of the commandments. Uh, I mean, love the Lord thy God uh, with thy 
whole being, uh, not lip service, uh, uh, not just a nod and a wink, uh, uh, but to Lord, uh, uh, to love the Lord with thy entire being, uh, with thy heart uh, and thy soul, uh, thy mind and thy strength. Uh, and every good Jewish person uh, uh, knew this, and, and they quoted this from the book of Deuteronomy, uh, uh, to love God with heart, soul, mind, and strength. Uh, in other words, love him with everything you got. And then he says in verse 31, and the second is like, namely this, that shall love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And so we see in verse 29 and 30, we have love for God. And then in verse 31, we have love for others. Hey, listen, the love for others comes alongside the love of God. And my friend, hey, listen, you can't love others. You can't love others the way you're supposed to uh, until you first love God. Uh, hey, listen, I, I mean, it comes alongside the first. Uh, uh, we can't obey the second until we have uh, obeyed the first. And a lot of people say, we love the Lord. We throw that around loosely. I, I love the Lord and, and I, I love the Lord. We love the Lord. Uh, but you know how we... You know how we demonstrate our love for the Lord? It's not what we say. Uh, it's not what we tell others. Uh, but we demonstrate our love for the Lord uh, in our actions, in the things we do. Uh, uh, glory, hallelujah. We, do, we demonstrate. Hey, listen. If you want to love the Lord, uh, uh, you demonstrate it by the life you live. You can't live in a life of sin. And say you love the Lord. You can't live in rebellion to God's word. And say you love the Lord. I, I, you can't live in rebellion to the things of God. And say you love the Lord my friend. And you can't love the Lord. And if you don't love the Lord. You can't love others. Uh, as you love yourself, my friend. Uh, I, I mean, this scribe understood this. Uh, uh, he was not like the other scribes uh, because the Lord later in this chapter uh, in verse number 38, uh, uh, he tells them to beware of the scribes. Not this man in particular, but the scribes as a group. And the Lord uses this language of warning. He says, beware. And this is what he has to say. And he said unto them in his doctrine, that's his teaching, Beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing, and love salutations in the marketplaces, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the uppermost rooms at feast, which devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. These shall receive Greater damnation, damnation. Uh, I, I mean, in verse 38, uh, uh, verse 39 and verse 40, uh, there's at least five things uh, that the Lord has to say uh, about the, uh, the, the false lives of the scribes, uh, the error of their thinking and their ways. Uh, first of all, uh, he said they'd like to go in long clothing. In other words, uh, uh, they'd like to put on a show. Uh, uh, they'd like to put on a display. Uh, uh, he said they love to be noticed. Uh, he said they, uh, they love salutations in the marketplaces. Uh, they like to be noticed, uh, uh, to be petted and called out and called upon. Uh, they like for people to, to make over them. They like to be noticed. They like the uh, they like to be put on display. Uh, they like self. He says in the chief seats uh, in the synagogues, uh, and I understand the difference between the synagogue uh, and the local New Testament church. Uh, uh, but to put it uh, like this, uh, uh, when they went to church, uh, they like to sit in the best place. Uh, uh, they like to have the preeminence. Uh, uh, they like to uh, they 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 were self. Uh, they were motivated by self ambition. They were motivated by self importance. Uh, uh, they. Loved of self. And he said, which devour widows' houses. And they were greedy over compassion. Here these poor widows had lost their husband and living on just meager means, hardly able to support themselves. And, and they liked to devour uh, uh, widows' houses. They, they had no compassion for them. They, they, they had no love for them. Uh, uh, they weren't concerned about them. Uh, and my friend, uh, and then they liked to put on a religious show. The Bible says for a pretense. 
They make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. Now this is what the Lord had to say about the scribe. But this scribe came to the Lord in verse 28. He had perceived what the Lord had asked, or what they had asked of the Lord, and he knew there was something different about Jesus. And he asked him a, a question in verse 28, uh, and he says, uh, uh, which is the first commandment of all? And this man who had uh, parted and parceled the word of God into 600 plus commandments uh, and laws uh, now gets a lesson uh, from the great teacher uh, and from the savior and the great master uh, who takes the law and he sums it up in two things. Uh, he says, love God with everything you got. Uh, uh, love God more than anything else in this life. And he said, love neighbor, love others as yourself. My friend, the Lord saying, you can't love others until you love God. And you can't love God. And you don't love God until you demonstrate by your life and the actions of your life and the attitude of your life and how you behave yourself and conduct yourself. That will demonstrate your love for God. You know what the Lord was telling him as we begin to kind of come to a close in our message today? I thought about this. Now here, this man is st standing in the presence of the Savior. I, Brother Jack, I don't know how much close you could get to the kingdom of God. I, hey, listen, I, I mean, I, I've never looked upon the Lord with these natural eyes. I, I've looked upon him with an eye of faith. Uh, and he's been with me every step of the way. And I feel his presence with me each and every day. I, I, I mean, he's a friend. I, I mean, a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. I, he loves me and cares for me. He's the com uh, he sends me comfort. Uh, and, he, and he takes care of me like nobody else can. He died for me at the cross of Calvary. But I have never placed eyes, physical eyes, on the Savior. But this man who knew the Word of God uh, inside and out stood in the very presence of the Savior. Savior. And uh, having answered the Lord well, and after the Lord uh, had answered him with these, this response, he, he says, and the scribe said unto him, well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all thy heart, and with all thy understanding, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Uh, and when Jesus saw that he answered him discreetly, uh, in other words, wisely, uh, uh, properly, uh, uh, with discretion, he looks upon this scribe and he says, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. This is the summation. This is the summation of what I think Jesus was, sa was saying to him. This is the message I want you to hear today. I believe what the Lord was telling this man is, you understand that God loves you, and you must love him in return. He's telling him that you're just one step from salvation. I, I mean, uh, you've got the right attitude, uh, but he said the thing that you lack is you need to receive me as your personal Savior.